I'm so excited he's on the show. He's one of the sharpest and most original young comedians of recent years. You're going to love him. It is the brilliant Mr James Acaster. <laughs> Hello, how's it going? James, take a seat. I I'm so excited you're finding on the show. I'm thrilled. Everyone's been talking about you for a while. I've been enjoying your Netflix specials. You look kind of different today. I I I've been used to seeing you dressed a certain way uh, when I see you doing comedy. I've never seen you in a polo neck, certainly not such bright clothing before. Bought it by mistake. <laughs> <laughs> it was cold earlier this week and I really needed a jumper. I went to a shop real quick, but it was folded up and they sneakily folded the neck into the rest of it. So it looked like a normal jumper and the lady said, have you tried it on? And I said, I'm a medium. Trust me, it's fine. <laughs> this is what I look like now. Yeah. <laughs> so you didn't realise it had the polo hidden in it, the polo neck? No, and I put it on and I thought, oh, this will be funny now. You've got to roll with it. I thought, this will be funny. I look stupid. And everyone all day said it suited me, which is worse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? You're the kind of person who suits a polo neck. That basically is everyone going, we always knew you were a dick. <laughs> <laughs> but you're still wearing it? Still wearing it, because you've got to lean into it. <laughs> I accept who I am now. You're looking at a new man who knows exactly who he is, and he isn't happy about it. <laughs> this, is, this is what I'm stuck with the rest of my life. you accepted it? Um, now... I had a grill, but not a toaster. Were you...? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You get... I mean... I don't know how you knew what my next question was, but that's uncanny. No, no. Oh, okay. see that coming a mile off, mate. Uh... <laughs> You know, we've been talking with Gemma about being on Dancing on Ice. Uh, you are yeah. getting to the level of celebrity now. Well, I imagine you are getting asked to do that kind of thing. Have you been approached? Would you do Dancing on Ice? Would you do Strictly Come Dancing? Would you go in the jungle? I'm not good at ice skating. No. When I was a kid, I got my ice skate stuck in my back. Uh, and uh, well, while I was wearing it, pretty impressive. <laughs> How did that happen? I slipped on the ice and I was so scared of going forwards that I tried to push my back backwards, but my ice skate was there and I stabbed myself. <laughs> so I had to be like two people had to take me off the ice like a flamingo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, before stand up, I believe you were involved in music somewhere. Didn't you teach music to children? Is that why? I taught drums to kids. Right. Yeah, that's easier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I taught drums to them, but none of them practiced. It was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, not... Kids are lazy. Did you know that? Yeah. I didn't know that until I taught the drums. They're yeah. unmotivated and lazy, and they're liars. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> they come in and be like, I've one kid he said he hadn't done his drum practice all week because he'd been getting into writing down car number plates. That's not a thing. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, he invented a hobby to get out of drums. <laughs> <laughs> like he's a PI going around writing car number plates down. <laughs> well, maybe he was just interested in numbers. He, he might not have been a lie. What, like a beautiful mind? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you put it like that. Put yeah. hidden codes in them. Yeah. He wasn't. This kid was were not S smart. So it wasn't a fruitful <laughs> experience for you teaching? Did you not have any joy? I mean, did any of your pupils go on to be good on drums? Yeah, there are three of them, if uh -huh. they're watching. Yeah. Uh, although I bumped into one of them recently. He came to one of my gigs and he doesn't play drums anymore. So there were two of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is that, is that depressing to know that you didn't pass on? Because I think if you're a teacher, you'd want to think you're one of those teachers who made a difference. Yeah, you'd want to. And this kid... He came up to me, he's an adult now, they do that. And he comes <laughs> up to me and he was like, uh, yeah, I I, I, you know, taught me drums. I was like, oh, how's it going? Are you still playing drums? He went, no, I'm a policeman. I was like, waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> and you were in a band, weren't you? You were in quite a few bands. Loads of bands, mate. The Wow Scenario, the Capri Sun Quartet. <laughs> New hardcore skiffle movement. I was wow. in all of them. <laughs> what kind of music? I mean, I guess the last one was skiffle, but what kind of music were the other ones? Uh, well, Cappy Sun Quartet was a folk funk group. <laughs> I was called Sir William Strawberry in it. Yeah. <laughs> our first names were our middle names, and the surnames was the flavour of Cappy Sun. Right. <laughs> so that was the. So you what would yours be? What, what's your middle name? Stephen. What's your flavour, favourite flavour of Cappy Sun? I guess I'd go orange. Would be Stephen the... Orange. So I mean, take that, mate. <laughs> It's not good, is it? It's not good. But music is a big thing in your life. You're doing a book. Now, this is a weird idea for this book. I think we have the cover. There you go. Perfect yeah. sound, whatever. What's the premise behind this book of yours? It's, uh... In 2017, do you remember that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I had a breakdown. Oh. And then, as a result, I bought... In order to cope with it, yeah. I obsessively bought music from 2016. And now, uh, I own over 500 albums from 2016. Wow. And I know for a fact it's the greatest year for music of all time. 
So, That's what the book's about. Well, you say it's a fact. Yep. But others might disagree that 2016 was the best year. I mean, it's not something one can prove objectively, is it? Uh, if other people own over 500 albums from a different year, I'll listen to them. Mm. <laughs> I mean, I think some years, maybe back in the day, they didn't release 500 albums. Yeah, rubbish years. <laughs> <laughs> not as much good music those years. What were the great albums from 2016? Because I know there'll be some popular... Actually, I mean, I don't know, did Beyoncé have an album out that year? Be yeah, Lemonade came out. Lemonade was a great album, I'll give you that. Yeah. Did they... Gaga have an album out that year? She did, she had Joanne came out in 2016. Yeah. Bowie had one out that year, didn't they? Black Star came out, yeah. Okay, that's pretty good I year. could play this all day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll be honest with you, I wouldn't have had you down as such a big Beyoncé fan. Oh, well, I, I didn't have you down. I'm such an ignorant host. Wow. <laughs> 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 I'd like to apologise for that. No, no, no. <laughs> the adrenaline got to me. I was... <laughs> Whenever I'm defending Beyonce, that's what happens. Well, it's nice You just, you just got in the firing line, Jonathan. I apologise so much. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here. It's a privilege. Yeah. Do you agree 2016 was the year for music? Well, this is going to impress you. Do you know Naughty Boy? Yeah. Who done Run In with Beyonce. Absolutely. He wants to make a track with me. Yes, please. I met him at the Brits. It's yep. all going ahead. I hope you do do that track. I am. It's happening. What's it called? I can't tell you yet. Good title. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, so, James uh, has his seventh solo show, uh, which is starting in May, and this title is intriguing to me. I don't know... Um, I don't know whether you choose to explain what the title means or will you rather be a bit of a mystery, but would you tell us what the tour is called? Cold Lasagna, Hate Myself, 1999. <laughs> And, and is that something you'd like to elaborate on, or...? Here's the thing. Uh, I had to name the show a while ago. I thought the show was going to be about those things. It's not. It's a mystery <laughs> even to me at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did have a lot of stuff about 1999 and why it was the best year of my life. I did have stuff about uh, how I ate some cold lasagna once. It's the best food I've ever tasted. Yeah. That's not in the show anymore. Well, wow. <laughs> so, so what is that? Because it's been replaced with some other food that was even better. Yeah, yeah. No, actually, no. Still, the best food I've ever had was that cold lasagna. Cold lasagna. Yeah, I didn't expect it. Here's what happened, right? <laughs> I went to Sainsbury's. I got a, like a ready meal lasagna. Yeah. Put it in the oven. It would, no disrespect to Sainsbury's on this. It wasn't to my liking. You didn't like when it was properly cooked. You still wasn't it was... my thing. Right. Put it in the fridge because I didn't want to put it in the bin. I felt bad. <laughs> then I got hammered on my own. Then later on... Hammered on your own? Yeah, yeah, I was watching Queer Eye and getting drunk. OK. <laughs> and then, when I was... <laughs> when I was really drunk, I went, I'm going to have another go at that lasagna. Yeah. <laughs> Time for round two. I, I got a, a serving spoon. I was confident. Yeah. <laughs> Put it in my mouth. Just the nicest... <laughs> meal I've ever had. <laughs> just the way the, the cold beef was as much... It's, like, almost plumper and more succulent. I like the way all the... What's the sauce called in the lasagna? Uh, bechamel. bechamel. That congeals. <laughs> quite a nice creamy thickness to it. Oh, I liked it. It was like a... Ah. Like a little layer of, uh, like a Haribo sweet. Yeah. And all the crispiness was even crispier and, like, more... So the crispiness where you'd cooked it... Cos you'd cooked it properly the first time in yeah, the oven, not in the, the microwave. Yeah, you got to cook it properly first. Cook it in the Hold oven. Hold on. Do you think you actually enjoyed it or do you just think you were so drunk you didn't know? Well, to be fair, I did try it again sober. Ah. It was disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> James, it was great having you on the show. I really enjoyed it. I hope you'll come back. Oh, yeah, I'd, I'd love to come back. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the brilliant James Ancaster. <laughs> Thank you, James. That is joyful. OK.